Hello everyone and welcome to the stream. I am Ra Zim and this is Ebon Sales Exalted Season 1 Episode 15 The Adorable Assassin's Crusade. As always, do remember to check out the description down below where you can find our link tree, which has links to our Discord, Telegram, Twitter, Patreon, and much more. And consider supporting the channel however you might. Uh, let's go ahead and... It was, this was something I was going to do with the werewolf game, but forgot. I would like everybody to start off by introducing themselves. And their characters. We'll, we'll, we'll just go down the list from... Uh, well, we're going to start doing that every at the beginning of every uh, session. Uh, Jaffa, just use one of your talkie cards for it. Uh, for now. Uh, Kurt, go ahead. Uh, hi everyone, I'm Kerr, I'm the DM, I'm the one who runs the game. I am also Zim's boyfriend. Yes, yes you are. I thought that was important. Congratulations. Clap, clap, clap. It is a position of prestige. Will I be invited to the wedding? Possibly. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, he's gone noble. Karama? I believe that's uh, <clears throat> I'm trying to X. I I'm trying to do the uh wait, crap, I'm I'm dual calming. <clears throat> I wanna try to get a voice. <clears throat> you can't just blow a hole into the surface of Mars. We don't Name really need to put <laughs> We, we, we don't really Name need star. a bunch of clearing your throat, just, you know. He had it. Name's so, Sark. Been around the block quite a few times. Did some time. Thought what I was doing. Thought I was fighting for a cause I believed in. But in the end, the only thing I got was a knife in my back. You know what they say. I need to work on it. I'm sorry. <laughs> you went dramatic, and that was cool. I like that. Yes. Uh, I, I was more Zim. just looking for, for example, I am Zim, and or Ra Zim, and I am playing Nevis, King of Conquerors. I was not correct. Okay. Okay, fine. Nevis, I'm a, I'm a king of werewolf. conquerors. That's that acceptable. Better? Sorry about that. That that's more. Uh, than hello, I am. Just <laughs> yeah. I am the fox bard, sometimes referred to in the server as Moriarty McCann, um, and I am playing the individual known as Cyril. And I am Toshime, and I'm playing Guaco Pelps. And you're watching Disney Channel. Da, 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 da. No. <laughs> Jaffa says, oh. hello, I'm Jaffa. I mean, we've got a lot murder. of foxes in murder here. Murder is so. a scary combat Hold character that, that has sense. even scared the DM a few times. I forgot that I wasn't feeding it through Discord at the time. But, okay. Uh, what did he say? Jaffer was playing his card. Yeah. What did he say? Jaffer currently Hello, is safe, so he cannot speak. So yeah. Go ahead, Kirk. My character is murder. Murder is a scary combat character that has even scared the DM a few times. Yes. Yes, he has. Murder has scared me a few times. All right. Now we'll go ahead and get on with the recap. Uh, let's see. Well, up zero, give it.
Recitation. Our previous endeavors had led us to the main court of Guaco's... It's Guaco, right? Yeah. Guaco's sister. Upon arriving there, we had found that there were a large number of large, fleshy individuals that slightly resembled human beings. However, due to a lack of empathy and due to a lack of any form of a ability to self-preserve, I came to the conclusion that this was not what they were. Regardless, we decided to try to facilitate communications between them. One such decided to immediately go into a state of fight, fight or flight at the sight of Nevis, King of Conquerors as one might do when faced with an overwhelming force. As a result, they proceeded to send their only individual guard that seemed loyal enough to attack him. To attack him. This loyal individual was being blackmailed, and as such, I went and removed the source of the blackmail, as well as many slaves. After said slaves were removed, the individual was dispatched without a second thought. As was the entire room. Duke. Overall, this was a pretty good day. <laughs> yep, and no one started the fight. All right. Well, Kerr. And so we begin again. After having dispatched the uppity nobility that had been causing such troubles for your forces, and as Lady Iceheart has said, the quality of your army has just increased immensely by this. You have begun to make actual plans for the war that is about to start. To... To help make sure everyone remembers, and for all of our audience who weren't here last week, right now you are faced with two armies two very very large armies one your the main force that you are currently somewhat focused on at least according to nevis is a very very large group of mercenaries thirty thousand strong they have taken over a their their main base so to speak is a shogunate stronghold a basically a very very large magical fortress that they've taken over and started using it's not first age stuff so it's not like super old super powerful it comes from the generation after that one known as the shogunates uh so most of this is like dragon blood level tech but it's likely going to be working tech so you're talking it's going to be fairly defensible, even against the Exalted. You're going to have to work for it if you try to just charge that fortress. Um, not to mention, according to Lady Iceheart's uh, scouts, they estimate the number of forces that the mercenaries have been able to move here to be around 30,000. This is basically almost the... Their whole army. Almost. You know their main force, the leaders, are not here. They're on an island in the north. But basically the entire actual army is pretty much here for the most part. You might have like maybe one or two thousand who are the bodyguards and direct soldiers under the leaders. But for the most part, this is the army. If you wipe this army out, 
you take them off the board. Easier said than done, necessarily. But that's just to put it forward. The other issue you have is the second army, an army of beast folk who are prowling around this island. And you know that there is a sidereal working with them. The reality bending super ninja. You've already met him once and he was in a war strider. So where the other army has numbers, a lot of numbers and possible charms that they can use things to their leader. This one, you're not sure necessarily how large the Beastmen army is. You don't have any exact numbers. You also don't really have any exact locations of their camps. Uh, Lady Iceheart has theorized that they are basically building underground camps and staying there to avoid being found by the larger force. But you do not have any real big numbers on them. You do know that they have been sort of skirmishing a little bit with the mercenaries. Not out and out battles and such, but testing each other's defenses, seeing how strong they are, that sort of thing has been going on that the scouts have been able to observe. And so far it seems like where the beast folk... Anonymous dispensation. Tokeme tipped one hundred and ten dollars, friends. And good. Toshime, thank you so much for that donation. The donation goal has been completed. Thank you, Toshime. Mm -hmm. The for the beast folk, they've always been moving around in smaller forces. You you're talking bands of like fifty to a hundred versus the squads of twenty to thirty uh, normal soldiers who kind of move around. But the beastmen armies, these little these large squads, these large forces. They can tear through a normal mortal group pretty easily. Almost every single time. It has been a slaughter in the beast fo in the beast man's favor. However, in the last two or three skirmishes, the mercenaries have been able to actually do fairly well for themselves. They've started to adapt tactics that make it much more difficult for the beast folk to throw their weight, their weight around to really get at them. They've adopted more defensive tactics against them. So far, it seems both armies are hesitant to come after you guys at the moment. One, you have the walls and such. Two, they know that their last little surprise attack did not work out at all for them. Um, you have a feeling that was supposed to be like cutting the head off a snake and ending it then and there, and then that just completely turned into a route for them. So neither side is necessarily willing to brave the walls of this city yet. And it seems you're not 100% sure on this, but... You're theorizing, at least Lady Iceheart and her uh, strategists are theorizing that one of the reasons that you guys have not been hit yet by basically like the 30,000 strong army all at once is because the mercenaries are afraid if they march all their forces on this city and try to either get into a really big siege or just try to like climb the walls and attack, they're gonna get hit by from behind by the beastmen. And they're just gonna get basically destroyed. Uh anvil to hammer, if that makes sense. Two pronged attack. Yep. If the mercenaries go after the your guys' city, when they're on the walls and trying to get in, the beastmen come up from behind them and basically start slaughtering them from behind and they have nowhere to go. 
And it's the same thing for the Beastmen. If they try to make the move here and they can't do it really, really quickly, what's to stop 30,000 mortal soldiers from just jumping on them and trying to butcher them? Rainier, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you so much for that skin purchase. I really appreciate that. You're helping us get closer on the uh, goal for the next skin. Which, actually, I am leaning very heavily to using my character that I'm playing tonight as the new gladiator uh, unit. So, you know. So, that sort of information is pretty much what you guys all have at the current moment. Um... Right now, you are holding a force. Iceheart soldiers. Plus the nobles forces. And all the people that they've been able to train and basically turn into conscripts to help defend everything is about 10,000, give or take. Which is pretty much almost like the population of the city at this point. Other than, like, the children and some of the women and men who cannot fight. Um, food is okay for now. You guys have quite a lot of food. You still have water access. Um, the, your guys' navy is holding strong and able to still get in food. Send out ships to fish. So food, as long as you don't mind fish and things like that, you should be okay. And water is not going to be a problem thanks to Lady Iceheart's uh, water affinity for creating... She has been able to create springs that the city has basically been using for their water and other needs as well. So as long as she's okay and stays in town, she can keep this going indefinitely. As long as you guys can maintain your navy and protect... Your sea vessels, basically, you could maintain a siege indefinitely at this point, no problem. Try and think of any other information or details that might be important or relevant here. Um, otherwise, there hasn't been much infrastructure damage to the city itself. Everything is pretty much still functional and okay. There's some damage to a couple of the buildings from the last attack, but nothing that can't be repaired fairly easily. Um, is there any questions any of you might have about any sort of strategic things that I might not be thinking of? Or just questions in general? Uh, nothing comes to mind for me right now. Which one would his fair folk army rather fight? Um, honestly, both sides, they'd be fine with either one. They would not really be super picky about this. This, this all is very interesting. If they were asked to fight, they would be Happy to do so. Um, and of course, you do have your own army as well, Nevis. Um, right now, if you attempted to attack the fortress, Nevis, based on your... I'm not even going to make you have to roll because this is such an easy thing for you. You will succeed basically no matter what. Unless Lady Lux says no, so there's actually rules in place that says if you can just basically do three times the difficulty, you don't even have to roll, and you easily have that. Um, Nevis, you know if you try to attack the fortress right now, the main base of the mercenaries, it would probably not go well for you. You could, you would probably be able to win, give enough time and who you're with and everything i mean just unleash murder upon them <laughs> eventually you're going to win um but doing that going that sort of course of action is going to lead to a lot of casualties a lot of death 
you're going to lose a lot of your army if you try doing that. Do it. Um, the sort of things you might want to employ, the strategies here, is right now you have sort of the advantage here. You have the resources, you have the food, you have water, you have basically no real supply lines that you have to worry about for this fortress. You can maintain a slower pace in this fight because most likely, based on what you know about what you're dealing with here, these other two forces are going to be having to import food water supplies all that that's going to be take supply lines that take ships that's going to take work and effort to maintain so it's going to be harder for them to maintain a fighting force than it is going to be for you a longer fight favors you guys despite how kind of crazy that might seem As long as both armies Jaffa are in says, play at the when moment. Can murder kick down the door and go ham. <laughs> murder. Murder. <laughs> as long as both forces are still basically working you have an advantage that neither side is necessarily going to go for a full-on invasion of your city at the moment so you you can move your army out and go on the offensive without having to worry too much about being counter invaded so to speak because for all they know this could be a bluff you could move your army out, make it look like you're marching somewhere, and then immediately double back and hit anyone who tries to go after your fortress. I think our current our plan last time was Nevis and Murder go out to the mercenary camp. Yes. Uh, and then Sark goes uh, and uh, does reconstance. Yes. Statement. I shall act as guardian, as I already have. Okay. And what does uh, Guaco want to do? This is interesting. We could parlay with the beast men to have them attack the Shogunate fort with us. You could attempt this, yes. That is something you could try to do. Query, may I suggest a more finesse approach? How so? Description. War is a very large and bloody thing that is often fought between smaller numbers of individuals than the actual numbers of who truly die. Recommendation. To avoid the larger masses dying, it is better to cut off the individuals who are feuding in the first place, that being usually the leaders in command. Is the Beastman, do we know if one the Beastman's army is from Mahasuchi? Yes, it is from Mahasuchi. Mahasuchi is not among them. Okay. He's he's likely promoted a general to do the to lead uh in his place for this. Plus he has the sidereal that you know is working for him as well. But you don't know who the actual leader of the Beastman army is. 
at least not like fully confirmed. Also, I do want to let everyone know uh, we will be we are going to be moving into the war system. I want to test that out a little bit. And I think this is a perfect moment to do that. Uh, I just want to let you guys know when I'm walking you guys through the war system. Uh, it does move on a longer timetable, like days, weeks, and months. Um, so don't feel like, hey, we have to do all this at once. This is going to be broken out into like days, weeks, or months in time in universe time frame of you guys basically doing what you're doing if does that make sense yeah mm -hmm. okay yeah you guys do not have to rush here you guys will be working in long time frames for what you want to do in this war this is going to be an actual war between these three sides and they actually gave us rules for it i want to test it out because I want to see how it compares to the system that we had in 3rd edition, which was very little for mass combat. <laughs> it really, like, mass combat in 3rd edition was basically just normal combat, except you had a glorified character called an army. This is a bit different. So I want to see how it goes. Either way, wait, now I have to do the voice. Either way, we're, uh, no, I can't do it. <laughs> Either way, yeah. we're going to need to, we're going to need to do some reconnaissance. Yes. I'll continue with the reconnaissance on the Beastmen camp. Okay. So, since we have, we have an idea of what, like, everyone kind of wants to do a little bit here. Um, but I want to double check real quick, because, Guaco, what did you want to do? I have to study the other fort, the Shogunate fort. Okay. So here is what we're going to be doing. We're going to be moving into the first phase of the war. So this is how it's going to work. Nevis as the... I'm assuming you guys are going to choose Nevis, um, considering he's the leader of the army and such that you guys have. Uh, Nevis, you are going to be basically the leader of the group. Yes? If everyone would be okay with that? Yeah. I, I thought that was... Okay, yeah, let's do it. I just wanted to double check. I didn't want to assume anything from anyone. Um, so here's how it works. This is how the war system works here. Uh, each of you get to decide on something that you want to do. You guys have basically already done that for our first for our first phase. So here's what we do then is each of you are going to roll something for me. And depending on how well you roll is going to give either bonuses or penalties to either uh, bonuses to Nevis's army or penalties to the enemy's army. Depending on what you guys are trying to do. Some some things that you do now may not have effects yet. For example, Guaco's studying of the fortress probably isn't going to affect an open battlefield fight between Nevis's army and one of the other armies in a skirmish. But when you go invading that fortress, then you get some bonuses and such. Make sense? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So we have our first phase here. So I think let's go in order, basically. Sark, you're going to be doing some reconnaissance. So let us have, let me get my thingy up because my thingy is closed. Where is my thingy? Thingy, come to me. Where's my thingy? There's my thingy. Thingy. All right. 
Where is my stuff? There you go. Give me a stealth roll, please. I'm going to assume finesse. And if you have any charms or such that you wish to use, feel free. Yes. Feel free to use any charms and such that you wish to use because these are going to be long-term things. You guys are doing this over, like, days of time. And the only time you have to worry about fighting is if you really screw the roll, the roll up or you're actively looking for, like, a sort of fight. Oh, can I, can I use force? Yeah, if you want. I will allow... The way it works, Kurama, is you use whichever of those you want, but you got to describe how you're using it. You're so making... I'm going to. Uh... It's a stealth check. That's it's a stealth I'm... check. Yeah. Yes, I'm going to so... try to. Force. That's going to be a hard one. Yeah, they encourage role play and being descriptive with actions in this game, in this mm -hmm. system. So, so what I'm going to do? Doing what you did for your introduction. Do that. Yep. As I walk out of the room, I take my cloak back up and put the head. It's not a kioff. I think it's a kioff. I put. I'm just gonna call it kioff. I put the kioff over my head to to that to, yeah, to sort of hide my face. As I walk out, I make my way to the camp. As I'm making my way through, uh, considering I am not that stealthy, nor am I that uh, that small, I do a more subversive tactics. A guard can't scream. If the guard's no longer alive. So, in order to make my way through the through the camps and to set areas, I take every advantage to just sort of off a guard and quietly dispose of his body. But you said you weren't that stealthy. Define I thought you self. were stealthy. As, I mean, the, what I rolled will tell you otherwise. <laughs> also, so so you're attempting to be stealthy. I am attempting. Okay. I love how you are basically being like a, a noir tech detective with your description here. He is hard to boil though. Listen, uh, I like this flavor. Okay, don't 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 ruin it. I, I will say that. I try, I try to stay, find where the wolves are, and see if I can blend in with them. Make it make more sense to see wolves around, uh, around other wolves, you know, hide in plain sight, type of thing. Ah, uh, Sark, roll two more dice for me. I have no idea what's going to happen. <laughs> You were very descriptive, so you get a bonus two dice. <laughs> that didn't... Oh. Well, they canceled each other out, so you didn't hurt yourself. Dude. I thought that was going to be double ones for a second. I had a grand total of one success. It's a success, at least. You had two successes. He had a one... Uh, the seven, eight, and nine, and then the one, and then the seven and the one cancel each other out. So you got two. Thankfully, you're going against not a confident force quite yet. So let's see. Right now, they don't have their best scouts because this is... They've only been dealing with the normal mortals at the moment. So let's see how their first roll is. I get caught, it better be because I stepped on a twig. Which guard's name is Twig? Oh my god. 
Okay. So. I just want you to know, Twig had a family. <laughs> poor little Bush. Yeah, she... uh, poor little Bush and Root. They're going to grow up without their daddy now. And let's not forget his husband, Branch. And his sister, Ru wait, Paul. Oh, oh, his husband, Branch. Who, uh... Well, let's just say Twig called him daddy, too. <laughs> oh. And there's Uncle Stick. We don't talk about Uncle Stick. You have, Sark, you have begun to try to take out some of these uh, scouts. They're that are outside the fortress or outside one of their little camps. You haven't found one of their main areas. This is more looks like a raiding camp uh, that's kind of bedded down for the night. You're able to take out a couple of them, two, maybe three so far before something goes wrong. Something that you were not expecting in the slightest to see. You see him. You see the face of one of the people who betrayed you and left you for dead on the other side of the camp walking. I thought you said there wasn't going to be any combat. There wasn't going to be any combat, and then the scouts ended up rolling eight successes. Which, in this case, means uh, when, when these opposing roles happen, uh, losing does not mean a failure. It simply means a complication happens. It means things get interesting. Yes. Like, yes. Okay, so it's like, Sark, you're attempting to gather information and deal with some guards and stoke some fear. If you succeed... You are able to succeed without any issues or problems, and the army will suffer a penalty to it. If you fail, well, as you're doing it, something happens, and it's up to you to overcome it. I thought and you didn't say you are gonna you are gonna suffer a penalty. Just remember, depends. losing is fun, and this is clearly yes, in, lots of fun. In, in this case, Sark. Um, the reason why you kind of stop here as you throttle this third guard to death isn't because, oh, they caught you. It's, oh. 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 <laughs> Him. He's about a hundred feet away. It looks like he's got in a tray of food and is currently sitting down to eat with another group of beastmen. But you recognize him. You would never forget that face. Is it? Is it another wolf? Yes. Alright, now... There are a couple things I can do. Yes, there is. I could either go for it. I could either try to resist all and try to figure out how to do this smart. Or I can leave it up to fate. What do you guys think I should do? Should, should we uh, leave it up to fate or do one of the two? Or should we let Twitch chat decide? R N Jesus. R N Jesus. R N Jesus. Hey, Kerr, highs or lows? Uh, 
What's up? You cut out there? Highs or lows? Hi. I like giving well, high. As you know, I can't influence the game with cards. Did encourage me to be quite naughty. So, so highs, highs you want something good to happen, highs you want something bad to happen. Ah, uh, let's go good. Highs for the high road. And I'll take the low road. And I'll slaughter more sheep before you. What? Cat dog. Oh, I thought you were trying to sing the banks of Loch Lorma. <laughs> oh no, it, it's a it, it's a parody from um, Cat Dog. No, I put that together once you told me what it was from. So, like, that's the same tune, but those are not the words. <laughs> yes, it is. <clears throat> well, I know what I rolled, and this might get interesting. No, it, it's not mine. It's going to get interesting now. That's the point. So. Sark's going to lose. Absolutely. All. Sense of what the mission was. He. Totally has forgotten what he was doing. And he just sits there. Staring. He backs away from the camp and sort of uh, starts to circle the camp and really sort of tries to stay in the area um, where this this uh, this fellow this fellow wolf is uh, sitting and eating. He's gonna stare, not wanting to overplay his hand he's decided to uh to wait to uh to see what exactly he's up against and what things he may have to take into account in other words he's going to watch this man or this other wolf mm -hmm. from the shadows I like to imagine that Sark had just about been discovered by Twig. And this entire time, he's just had his arm out straight, strangling Twig, while his eyes are completely focused on this guy that betrayed him. And, no, 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 no. Uh, You're forgetting, he stepped on Twig. So he's beneath his foot being crushed at the neck. Right, right, exactly, yes. Give Anyways, me a awareness roll. I just had to put something away real quick. No worries. So is it uh, next person's turn? I know. Give me an awareness roll. Awareness roll? Got it. Yep. Awareness plus whichever one you want. You know, you can roll them all at once, right? That's correct. Okay. Just saying it might be easier for you. Yeah, you probably should have done you, that. Do it how you want, but like, just I'm just letting you know. That was significantly better. Yeah, yeah, you do good. Where did 
right, so let me roll real quick for them. Rolling, 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 rolling. They rolled much worse this time than they did before. <laughs> Yes, while you are doing this, observing your target, you have a very good vantage point of almost this entire little camp. And you are able to also study their their guard patterns, their sort of schedule. You start to get the feel for how these people start to defend their camps, it seems. You would need to observe a couple more camps to know for sure if they use the same tactics everywhere. But you have a strong feeling that if you did, you would be able to slip in easier and deal with things or advise how to beat their defenses. If, say, like a nighttime raid was launched. And all this time as well. You study him, watch his every move to learn exactly what he does and where he is staying. And do I know, hmm? I was about to say, do I know how many guards exactly are in the camp? Yes. There's about 15. So realistically, if I just slaughtered the entire camp i could do it um the camp is about a hundred strong so you might be able to pull it off but it would be a little bit dangerous on your own you would it be would fighting take a little a bit longer group. yes because all these are trained soldiers they might not be fully armed and armored but they're beastmen they are kind of walking weapons as they are uh, when when I, um, I guess what I'm going to try to do is I'm just going to wait until he, he's alone, until like this one person is alone and he's sort of off by himself. Mm -hmm. Then, uh, then I'm going to make my move. Okay, then we will come back to you. Let's move on to our next person in our list. Murder. I believe you and Zim are together, if I remember correctly, is what you wanted to do. I'd like to yeet the bird. Oh god, I've been launched into this world. Oh no, I'm gonna die. <laughs> uh, there's no battles yet. Though... If you Jaffer, guys wish to... Hmm? Uh, Jaffer, preferably use the uh, talkie cards just for viewers' sake. I, I kind of gave them to you for that for that uh, purpose. Jaffer says, if there's no battles or targets, then I don't know what murder will do. Uh, if you guys want to try to go and start a skirmish, you guys would be able to do so if that is what you wished. Uh, or if you wanted to wait to start a skirmish until the very end. Basically wait to go last. Well, our original plan was offer terms for surrender. Mm -hmm. Basically, the the way this works, let me explain this real quick because it might change things real quick, is basically each member of the group is able to do something in action to either bolster your army or impede the enemy's army. And then once all of your actions have been done, Nevis gets to go in with his army and we have a skirmish roll and see how badly or how well one army does against the other to harm each other and the actions that you guys all take 
directly impact the flow of the battle, so to speak. Jaffa so, says, then I'll kick in the front door of the castle and murder everyone. <laughs> no. Yes. Nevis was very particular about giving them the chance to surrender. Uh, like, an example, one of the things you could do if you wanted to, uh, Jaffer is like you could scout out locations to fight at to basically lure their their your opponent into a bad battlefield that favors uh nevis's army uh because right now you already have a reconnaissance guy out uh, or you could help out during the battle like you could be one of the fighters in the battle and you would be able to assist nevis's army in slaughtering the enemy Jaffa says, I'm thinking an assassination of the enemy's officers. Okay, yep, that's something you could do. And I have an ad. Would you... Would you... Uh, Nevis, would you allow him to target the enemy officers? That would be fine. Okay. Jaffer, uh, which army would you like to target? The beast folk, the beastmen, or the uh, mercenary human army? Jaffer says, the more dangerous one. Uh, they're both dangerous, they're just different in different ways. You would probably do more damage to the human army with this tactic than you would with the Beast Folk army. If going after the officer, you do know there's a sidereal officer. Yes, it'd probably be safer and more effective to go after the mortal army. The, the beast folk would probably be able to get uh, someone up yeah. pretty quickly if you killed someone, but the humans, not nearly as quickly. They have the more conventional forces, which makes them more uh, susceptible to this tactic. Unless you're specifically going for the beast man. <laughs> Jaffa says, Martin but I Ford. want to murder the sidereal. Alright, so that would that would trigger an actual <laughs> battle if you tried to target the sidereal directly. Magic. That would be an actual, like, battle battle. Jaffa says, then I'll wait to go last. As the combat music starts playing on stream. Oh boy. Okay. Cyril, give me what you want to do. Well, I was protecting the fort until they got back, so I protect the fort until they get back. Give me an awareness roll. Oh, wow. <laughs> awareness. Ah. Ah. Okay, sorry about that. I inhaled a little bit of my excitement, and it was too strong. One sec. Give me just one second, you guys. Be fine. You're good. Okay. 
Okay, I don't know why it only rolled one. What the heck is going on? What the heck? Why? Exalted, that's what's going on. I... I try to pick up the dice and drag it anywhere, but it doesn't move from its original spot. Uh, is there a command? Is there a type command I can roll? Uh, maybe slash R. Slash R. And then how many dice? Like... 8d6. Okay, right there. there is a command. It's roll. You have to actually type out roll. Oh, well, that's kind of shitty. Um, that's a that's a botch. Oh. Oh. A botch, you say? A complication. Mm -hmm. I blame Kun Kun because Kun Kun is here right now getting the bird seed. That fat fuck. And he is a sweet baby. And he devoured your luck. So. Cyril. Yes. <laughs> I have a question. And this is for you and you alone. Okay. Proceed. You, you cannot ask any of the others for help here. All right. What's the question? Would you like help? What? Would you like help? The f what the fuck did... You have no idea. That's the point. <laughs> this is a very vague question. And it you has... just said I can't. No, no, you no. Just... You can't ask them for a yes or no here. This is only for okay. you to answer. Do you want help? No. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Is that your final answer? Yes. Okay. Um, Cyril, while you are guarding, you do my room. You only notice a little bit too late that there are aquatic beast folk in the water. Uh, dolphins and sharks by the look of it. And they're studying the fortress. They're studying the insides, the comings and goings of the boats. But by the time that you are able to actually notice them, and start to move down to go after them, they start to swim away. And they are able to escape before you are able to do anything to stop them. Excuse me, there seems to be a bit of a problem with uh, with your proposal here. Mm -hmm. You're assuming that I'm going to move down to them. Fire. I mean, before you can even shoot them either. Okay. To get That's within reasonable. range of your gun. Even if I turn invisible? Mm-hmm. You mm. won. No, I get that. I'm just saying, like, he would use stealth. But, mm -hmm. yeah, okay. <laughs> Basically, by the time you notice them, they're already getting ready to swim away. Okay. So, it's just bad timing. On my part. Basically, yes. It's not really your fault, it's just like you just noticed this like right when they were finishing all their mission. And you just realized that these were probably spies. I just real No, it was obvious. <laughs> yeah, but now it's like, oh shit, they got away with the actual intel. Now the question is, what do you want to do about them? Uh okay. So I mean, first things first, we gotta tr I would try to track them. I have a tracking protocol. You can roll. 
Okay. Let me find the roll. This would be awareness again. Oh, just just awareness. Plus whichever plus attribute you want. Because I think there's a. Hold on. I just want to. Because I have relentless tracking protocol. Once the exalt is locked in on her target, nothing will stop them from running them down. Commit one moat. While the yellow chemical is engaged in a venture to track the target, she automatically knows the target's location and direction at the start of each interval. While pursuing her query, needing food or rest aren't obstacles the exalt faces. Oh boy. Is this effective? If you want to start a venture to chase after them, yes. Basically, what that means is a venture is an extended roll. You have to roll to overcome obstacles or challenges that try to stop you. Alrighty. Then I'm... I am committing two moats, one for the Relentless Tracking and one for Awareness Excellency. Okay. Uh, Eight. Another five, so that would be 13 dice. Not a single 10. How dare you hurt me this way? One, two. It's two successes. Where'd you go? Anybody? Okay. Two successes. That is enough to get into the water and start your pursuit without losing that. And now you're basically like, you just ran forward and dove into the water to make sure that they couldn't swim away. Uh, your life sign tracking uh, protocol is basically tried to lock onto them. Now, Cyril, I have a question for you. I have an answer. Go on. Do you? Would you like help? I don't like that you keep asking me this. I'm going to stick with mm-hmm. no. Okay. Okay. So, Cyril, as you're swimming, uh, you can see the water, the eddies are getting a little bit difficult. They're kind of tossing you about a little bit. Um... Your 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 body is much a little bit more clunky than theirs are when it comes to water navigation. So I need you to make an athletics roll for me. For our next oh, actually wait, I take the back. Hang on. How would you try to overcome getting through these basically these tides under the uh water? Alright. I know you're going to like this. I'm going to take my gun. I'm going to put it in the water. And I'm going oh, to sh- You're in the water. Yes. <laughs> and I'm just going to shoot it to help propel myself. Like an engine. Through the current? Yeah. Make a ranged combat roll for that. (laughs) I like it. How many extra dice? Two extra dice. This is this is a worthy stunt. I'm taking something that's meant to kill things and I'm making it an engine. (laughs) Ironically, that's not as good as my excellency. I could come in another mode for ranged combat excellency, but I think this is enough dice. (laughs) 
How dare you? All right. Well, <clears throat> uh, that's one, two, three successes now. All right. Ranged comb. Come on. So the, the the eddies of the undersea area begin to batter you, toss you about a little bit, knock you around, and slow you down. But rather than let that deter you at all, you just cock your uh, rifle, set it to its lowest settings, and basically use the giant waves of heat it gives off to blast you through the water, like a cannon almost. As you begin to catch up to them now. See this? This is my boomstick! Brilliant. You are able to close the distance. And starting to get closer to them. Now, I have a question again for you would you like help just we're i'm just gonna set down the word no and ask that it be assumed for all scenarios at this point i i just have to ask okay <laughs> and I'm, I'm i'm telling you no and please assume that my answer is going to be no I'm checking the do not ask again box. <laughs> Cyril, you're getting closer to them, these two uh, spies. And as you're swimming, though, it seems a pair of sharks have taken attention to you. And they're starting to swim up towards you. What would you like to do to overcome these pair of great white sharks that are coming towards you? I'm using my gun as a propellant system. I very briefly just switch it back to gun and shoot them. You fools! <laughs> You're just going to try to shoot the shark. Yes! <laughs> going from lowest power and turning up the power I crank. Okay. <laughs> Make a rage combat roll. <laughs> you fools, I had my weapon the whole time. You wouldn't hit a man with glasses, would you? you Takes glasses off. Glasses. Yeah. All right, so that's uh, four successes. Those poor shark coons. They were just kind of curious. It's like there's this big shiny thing. Can we nibbles it? No. I don't know. Let's let's go see. I don't know what this thing Stop. is. No. <laughs> and then cease and desist. <laughs> and then when they were sw swimming up to you, you just proceed to basically vaporize them. And some of the water along with them. Oh yeah, I'm probably doing like some e e ecological damage right now. I don't know who's like, stubborn. Him or murder. I feel like I'm like boiling the water around me. Just really? using this thing. <laughs> yeah, no, the, the, these poor sharks... No, no, they didn't. They didn't have a chance. Uh, yeah, there's nothing but skeletons left as the bursts of superheated water and uh, energy washes over them, and once more propelling you forward after them. Um, and you gave our kaiju a blast weapon. And now it looks like you're actually getting close enough that you might be able to catch them very quickly. How would you attempt to do so? I have a feeling I know the answer. Sorry, someone just messaged me. What was the question again? 
You are now getting close enough that you might actually be able to catch them now. How do you wish to attempt to catch them? And I feel like I know what the answer might be. Ah, uh, let's see. Let's see. How many are there? Two. Two? They're swimming fairly right. close together. All right. I would like to get as close as I can to them. Mm -hmm. And then I would just like to... Gun? No, grab them. Oh, okay. I'm actually going to attempt to grab grapple them. I don't know what role that would be. That's going to be a grapple. That will be a close combat role. All right. <clears throat> One of the things Cyril is less good at. What's with all the wands? <laughs> One success. All right, they actually get a chance to roll. They're not well trained, though. So they only have those. And they botched. They botched as you are able to get your oh. hands on them. How did they botch? You you rolled five d ten where we could all see it. I know. No, they have another penalty that you don't see. Oh, okay. Because of things that are going on in the background, they stepped on an undersea. Like the, the the water starting to boil <laughs> from gun. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Here's to new beginnings. Actually, actually, it's specifically because you use the gun that it changes the first success they roll into a one. Oh, damn! I wanted to, I wanted to reward the inventiveness you had. Hero's main inventiveness. How can I use this gun in this solution? <laughs> When it I'm not but yes, they will botch this roll because they didn't roll any more successes, and that seven gets turned into a one. Statement. I believe you will often find that violence is an answer. As the two squirm and try to get away, and you hardly even feel their struggles. All right, and I'm just going to try to like. Um, almost like do that like neck pinch thing to knock them out. Close combat. Another close combat. Okay. Mm -hmm. Two, three, four, five, six. Let's go. I think I make this one. One, two, three, four. It's four successes. Bonk. Bonk. You it's gotta go, bonk, Jaffer. It's more of a just... Well, alright, Jaffer. Okay? Thank you so much for coming by. I hope everything's okay. I hope Raven's okay. Agreed. Double agree.
Thanks for coming by, Jaffer. Have a fantastic night. <clears throat> Alrighty, well, uh, and then he just, like, once he has them both knocked out, he begins to swim back with them. Uh, you are able to make it back pretty quickly and pretty easily. Nothing gets in the way this time because you don't I'm, need to. I'm, I'm notably right. not using the gun to not kill these guys. <laughs> so you're being less violent, God. <laughs> Listen, I wasn't being violent before. Before I was just being innovative. I'm not done being violent. Oh, but you're done being in in the innovative. Yes, you see, Cyril has this other thing that I've been keeping up my sleeve called exhaustive interrogation method, <laughs> <laughs> which is called quit hitting yourself. Quit hitting yourself. Determined to eliminate inefficiencies, the exalted draws the truth out of her target. Spend one moat, double eights on read intentions, rolls when questioning a character. For extra success, the character must answer one question with complete honesty. Oh, please stop hitting me. I'll tell you anything you want to know. Oh, no, I was thinking more waterboarding. I mean, you said it, not me. And the stream's 18 plus now. Already been. <laughs> <laughs> It was supposed to be PG-13. I mean, there was an attempt. It's been 18 <laughs> plus for a while now. Oh, it has been, actually? I did not know we made that change. All right, I can talk about peen. Bonk. You still need to stay <laughs> within Twitch TOS. All right, fine. But yes, you are able to make it back to your uh, allies with your um, your your poor victims, the dolphin coon and shark coon. No, they're not victims yet. Right now, they're guilty. They're soon to be victims. And but I'll let someone else have a turn. Yes, it is Guaco's turn now, and. He is gone out to study the uh, the Dragon Blood Fort. Yes, mm -hmm. that's going to be a sagacity roll. Sagacity. Let's see what sort of dragon line stuff I can see. Let's see with that. It looks like this fortress is. Um, with this fortress, it looks like it's geared specifically. They've moved. Uh, what looks to be some lightning ballistas that you can see on top of the fort, and what looks to be a single implosion bow near the main gate, the main entrance to this fort. Um, lightning bu bl ballista basically uh, launch, as the name says, basically solidified bolts of lightning. 
And they are very, very, very dangerous to, especially like armies and such. And the implosion bolt fires a bolt that when it hits, basically draws everything into a small singularity and rips it apart. It basically implodes the space around it. Notoriously effective against large groups of uh, people. It seems that based on what you can see here, they are fortifying and setting themselves up for if any army tries to come after them here, they're going to get fucking tore apart. It's going to be next to impossible to take this fortress with an army easily. And <laughs> even if you were able to, the sheer numbers of casualties it's going to cost is going to be nasty to the extreme. Thank God we've got exalt. Yes. Based on what you see here with that roll, probably the best way to try to do with, deal with this issue is send in a you're like send in you guys to infiltrate the place and either take out the siege weaponry or just deal with the problem by trying to wipe out the soldiers in inside of the fortress the problem is you might need an army for that you don't know how many of the soldiers are actually inside of the fort though it's probably likely to be most of them so probably the best course based on what you can see here is uh using someone to basically take out that those siege weapons okay monkey leap technique up to the explosion bowl what <laughs> I can jump one rage band in the air as a movement action. Mm, indeed you can. Um, can I have a stealth roll, please? Okay, none in stealth, so... Just my finesse. So that's Delta Four. <laughs> Not needing a big army to do this. But it's a tie. They suffer a minus one penalty to their successes because of the darkness. They are not exalted. They suffer penalties that you do not. So they will suffer a minus one success. Actually, wait, hang on, hang on. You. Waco, I have a question for you. Would you like help? No, thanks. Okay. Uh, so with the minus one penalty that they have here, they will... Uh, I still have that 10, so they might still be able to succeed. They might be able to tie it. Let's see. God damn it, that is why. Yeah. Hey, uh... Guaco, you are able to get up onto the wall without anyone currently seeing you at the moment. But you're not sure how long that's going to last before guards might show up on a patrol. Okay, easy enough. Get on an explosion bowl and turn it into the fort and fire.
I think you broke a car. Um, can I have a sagacity roll, please? <laughs> that is enough to know how to activate the bow. Make a uh, weaponry roll, please. The uh, where is it? A ranged combat roll for me. Okay, and roll me a d10. going to be let me check my sheet real quick give me a minute uh i'm glad i uh took the time to kind of work through this okay so that's going to be about oh mm. um Hey, Guaco, could you roll 12d, uh, 12d10 for me, please? Yeah. I want to see how bad the damage is. Wait, 12d10? Ooh. Mm-hmm. Reroll eights as well. Eight nines and tens. You have double eights on this. Because... Lightning Ballista are made to... Are you on the Lightning Ballista or the Implosion Bow? Lightning Ballista. Okay, yep. They have double eights against structures. It's 11 successes. <laughs> okay. Um, so, Guaco? I know a little bit exalted. It takes a little bit to figure out exactly what you're doing with this. Like, okay, this is an older model. You're, it's not like the ones that you're used to practicing with when, like, you know, going through basic training as a dragon blood and all that stuff. Learning how the stuff works. You know, normal stuff for your family. This is this is an older model, not the one you're used to. So it takes a little bit for you to get used to it, figure it out. It's like, okay, I got this though, I got this. And then you take a and you fire. And when you do, Guaco, You're aiming towards one of the larger buildings on the inside of the fort. It's basically one of the closest ones that you're able to just aim at. You're not really, like, necessarily aiming for it. It just looks, like, big and important. So it's like, well, okay, why not just shoot that? You're it's probably not. Gonna... 
yeah, you're probably not going to be able to do as much damage to the actual keep itself. But for the outlying buildings within the fort, yeah, sure, that'll work. And the entire building basically gets vaporized when you take that shot. That bolt of lightning coming down like an angry god and smiting it. As it basically, the entire place just erupts and explodes. I think they know I'm here. And yeah, you can hear people screaming and shouting. Um, like, they're freaking the hell out of, like, what the fuck just happened? And, Guaco, you overhear that apparently that was their food supply. Hey! Inside of that building. Learning from Sark, I see. And can I do a feat of strength to take the bow off the tower? Yes, you may. That'll be physique and fitness? Yes. I have the power! Yes, you are able to lift it. You are swole. Now time to jump away with this prize. Alright, make an uh, athletics roll for me. And this is also using Monkey Leap. Yep. Mm. Alright. Yep. Yep. You are able to get away scot free with that, along with your monkey leap technique. Parkour! And time to bring this to the town for their own defense. Yep. That's going to get marked down here. As you make it back. And... <laughs> and Nevis, you see Guaco come back with a giant metal, what looks like a giant metal crossbow. I thought you were just going to observe I did observe and I saw they had a weakness what is that this is a lightning bow I can just imagine it who's at least it's on our side instead I can just imagine Nevis just staring at Guaco, just what, just trying to figure out how to process and or what to think. What did you do? They have worse weapons there than this against armies. If you need a better explanation, I'm sure Icewind could tell you. Yes, this is, um, lightning ballistas are rare. They are very, very difficult to make. Very expensive if you could even try to buy one. 
Well, we didn't have to buy ours. We just stole it. Mm-hmm. And they're basically anti-siege, anti-war uh, strider, and anti-army weaponry. They they are they are basically the equivalent of like a rocket launcher that shoots lightning bolts. Seems useful. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. They have their own internal supply of essence. And usually like dragon bloods or an exalted can refuel it by using their own moats. Or by putting a hearthstone into it to serve as the battery for it. It can also be carried by like a two-man group to be used as like actual weaponry instead of being put in like a uh in like how the fortress was and what makes one extremely scary is if you have an exalted like Cyril who gets equipped with one yeah yeah uh alchemicals can be when they get big enough can be installed with it. Directive. Cyril, install this on yourself. Objection. That's not how that works. <laughs> Yes, since Jaffer is gone. Nevis, it is your turn. You said that the moment I got up to go put away my cottage sheets. I'm sorry. Okay. Nevis is going to continue with what he was uh, planning to do in the first place. Uh-huh. Would have worked out better if we had planned, uh, you know... Organized a bit so Nevis could walk through the gates and be like, Here's your opportunity to surrender. Uh, and then the ballista fires. But it's okay. We can work with this. So. Nevis is just going to walk up to the gate of the uh, fortress. I imagine Nevis just like looks over, angry face, walks up. That was a warning shot. <laughs> <laughs> you are now able. <laughs> What's that? I can't hear you over the firing of your cannons. I love that one. Anya is great to play with. Yeah. Anyways, you were saying you can, see, you can see some of the guards are uh, up on the walls, and since you make no effort to try to hide yourself, you can see some of them starting to move the bows, but none of them have really fired. They're kind of like looking at you warily. Are the gates open or closed? They're closed. What would it take for Nevis to just open the gates? That would be a feat of strength. That would be physique. 
I have a thing for this. Where is book? I need book. Book! Come to me, darling. That is a thing that can happen in Exalted. Ah, <laughs> uh, as part of my upgraded hybrid body transformation. I can uh, assume a frenzied hybrid war form. Mm -hmm. uh, at her option, she treats her unarmed attacks as heavy weapons, increases her hardness and base soak by one, and adds three bonus dice to performing feats of strength. These dice do not count towards the limit. Right. So, uh, going to take that up. So you get to roll to try to break through the. Uh... You can make your roll, your physique roll, to try to open the door. Nevis is mostly just walking up uh, and, and knocking on it very hard. Calling out, uh, I wish to discuss terms of your surrender. Oh, God. Complication. Nevis, I have a question for you. Yes. Would you like help? Sure. You keep asking everybody else. Sure, I'll take it. I'm the only one left. It's actually... I just want to say, thematically, this actually seems very thematic here. As Nevis, you march forward without fear to try to push this gate open. You give your command, and as you strain against the gate on the sides, the metal opens up, and reinforced wire comes shooting out, wrapping around your arms and your legs and around your neck, and then tightens, pulling your arms upwards. And you strain, trying to pull Freya. As you can hear the shouts from the uh, soldiers. Getting ready to open the gate and charge you, basically, while you're bound. When you hear a sound behind you. Uh, give me one moment. I feel a certain character is going to make an appearance. One second. I got to see if this goes through real quick. Come on. Work with me, computer.
Takeme is dancing with the crabs, but for longer. <laughs> yes! Yes! King of Conquerors needs assistance! Forward, my brethren! As you see, maybe three dozen crabs marching forward, being led by the one, the only, Krabiris. And I as you he... strain... I, I, I thought he rode on Nevis's shoulder. Usually, but he skittered away to uh, get you help. Yeah, remember ah. we told him to get help. This is that help. Right. As you're straining to try to get your spear to be able to cut through these wires, but you just can't get your arm to move as one of the crabs crawls up your leg, up your shoulder, and you see its little claw glow with essence for a moment before it snips the cable right as the gate swings open and you bring your spear around in a sweeping gesture and just sever all of the wires with one big slice. And as the gate opens, these mortal soldiers are expecting you to be trapped, to be helpless. And there you are, standing in all of your glory, spear out and ready. And suddenly, all of them look like they regret their life choices as they stare at you. They've been I having a very am, bad night. I am Nevis, King of Conquerors. And you will surrender or die. Don't forget the commander of crabs. Well, no, that's uh, Kerberius. But you do have a point. I should start adding more titles. Kerberius oh, no. is the god of crabs. You are the commander of crabs. New title unlocked. <laughs> Nevis is just playing Pokemon with titles now. I assume you've already seen that, but it's fitting. Okay, let's say. <laughs> That's going to be a presence roll. This is something Nevis is very good at. Uh huh. I'm just trying to remember all of the bonuses that I get on it. Uh... Okay, so I double nines. Add bonus dice equal to my essence what is this three bonus dice i forget let's see here okay maybe uh looking up only dread does not help me figure out the, the, the uh <laughs> hey i might need a little bit more of that Uh, if a character has a tie of fear towards the exalt, ah, right, that's how those uh, play together. The predator and prey mirror feeds into the dread tiger's symmetry, uh, because the predator and prey mirror makes it uh, makes them get a tie of fear. Fear me. You're spooky. They see me as a predator. You go num num on them. All 
Well, I guess it doesn't actually say tie of fear, but it does grant a minor intimacy, it says. That will count. That'll be it. The Lunar presents herself as a natural predator for whoever she speaks to. To a corrupt pro bureaucrat, she might seem like an auditor. To a humble farmer, a bandit. You are spooky. So... How much bonus is that? Uh, for a minor, it's a uh, plus one, plus three if it's a major. Okay. What is this three bonus dice? <laughs> this gets complicated. Oh, right. Uh, dr looking up Dread does not work. There are a lot of... Uh, dread appears in this book a lot. Uh, it's almost like you guys can be dreadful sometimes. That's how... That's how the exalted can be to normal people. <clears throat> oh, right. The menacing predator's posture for being a lunar. Uh, every detail of the lunar's bearing radiates predatory menace. Ties of fear to the exalt shapes grant the same benefit. In a predatory animal shape or hybrid form, gain three bonus dice in addition. And right now, ne Nevis is basically in a, uh, kind of like a werewolf form. Mm -hmm. Or were Martin, so. I guess from that, I get four bonus. Oh, no. Essence bonus as well, so six bonus. We got five from Finesse, five from Presence. So that's 16. Plus your two stun dice. Two stun dice, 18. Hybrid body transformation. That gives me a plus one bonus to all rolls. So 19. And I think that's all I got. Do you have an excellency? Yeah, but not for this. You need a presence, Excellency, next. I know. It's on the list. You're not rolling enough dice, mister. <laughs> um, I think I'm going to be rolling enough dice with that many nines and tens. Not enough. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight more dice. And that's two more dice. They see me rolling the dice. Y'all. All right, so one, two, those cancel out, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two successes. Duke. And he is, of course, shouting this. To as many as can possibly hear in this fortress. God damn. I find it funny that Nemesis just shouts at the enemy. Hey, it works. I mean, it does. <laughs> yeah. Instead of killing them, he recruits them. And thus, he gets stronger. Poor Kerr trying to make us fight actual wars, but Nevis is just like, nah. 
Nah, I got this, bro. I he got this. He walks into their camp and makes them all surrender immediately. Um. So how many successes was that together? Twenty-two. All right, there's a chance. You're telling me there's a chance. No, we have six no, dice. There isn't. The odds are astronomical. We got two tens there. <laughs> Imagine Kerr just starts rolling successive tens. No. <laughs> no. They, they they tried. They tried. Um. Surrender so... now, and you will be shown mercy. We will determine your faults and your crimes, and you will be punished. Those faultless will be recruited or offered amnesty. But this is your only opportunity. All right, so we're going to use this as their defense roll. This is yours. These guys have five health levels, so... They have five health levels. Mm-hmm. I have 18 successes on top of them. 17. Mm-hmm. Yep, but uh, the way battle groups work is you have their magnitude. So mag this, this would be a magnitude five force three times. You have like basically three magnitude five armies here. Uh, actually, more than that. Sorry. Oh, well, now they're Nevis's armies. Uh, but. But. You basically bring over for the forces that are garrisoned here right now that are currently here. Um, you're able to bring to your side like 500 of them. That does not sound they... like nearly enough to be deserving of what I've pulled off. You would deny Nevis his rightful victory in forcing them to submit and surrender? Uh, ripped apart three dots worth of magnitude from this force because of how many successes you rolled on one dice roll. Oh, so what you're saying is I need to keep going. Okay, got it. Actually, I don't think I have the boats for that. <laughs> All of those do take up quite a few boats. <laughs> Kerr, did I break you? You were... I think I broke her. Did anybody else hear me? Yeah. Okay, so it looks like uh, Discord is disconnected. 
All systems are not operational, you liar. Now I can hear you. I can, can you... only hear you on stream. Discord on my, my end is still in this loading screen. Yeah, my Discord just crashed. Hmm. Sorry, my internet just died. So it's back now. Uh, I actually yeah, no. saw it was uh, Discord itself. Yeah, Discord, it crashed for basically every one of us, it seems. Except, Except for me. me for some reason. Yeah, I was giving such a good little thing, and then it just, like, apparently none of it went through. Get you I, the, um... we, we did not hear any of it. I had asked if you were broken. And then, and that's well, why... apparently Discord thought I was talking to it. Yeah, <laughs> no, that's why I was like, wait, am I broken? Wait, can you guys <clears> not <throat> hear me? I, I, so... I guess the wench thought that was her tip. What was the last thing you heard? <laughs> Nothing, because you, uh, uh, you, you basically it was uh, about the battle group. Oh yeah. Oh Never god, been. all. So, Nevis, yeah, as about five hundred of them basically throw down their weapons and run over to you, shouting, "We surrender! We surrender!" And you can hear yells of traitors and. You'll pay for this. Um, uh, you can see many, many, many more soldiers are starting to show up from the inside of the fortress. And you realize now might be a good time to go. Crabs can climb walls, can't they? Oh, by the way, you do have a battle group one of crabs. Wait, really? And a new... Yes. Crabiris has rallied the crabs. You have a battle group one of crabs. You have like a dozen or two dozen crabs here. Who will loyally serve and follow you. They are the the, the uh, Martin Guard, the Royal Nevis Guard. So a one dot. Excuse me, excuse me, sir. Army of Did you literally crabs. just make a unit called the RNG? <laughs> oh my God, he did. What? Royal, Royal Nevis, Nevis Guard. Guard. The RNG. I command RNGs us. Yes. <clears throat> Kerr, you have given me so much power now. I mean, he rolled a 22 success, uh, so I think he already uh... commanded RNG. <laughs> what have I done? <laughs> Now we just need an army of, of cross foxes, and we can call it Task Force Rao. Okay, somebody go clip that little bit there. <laughs> that would make a great <laughs> clip. <laughs> I regret my life choices. Oh, you're about to regret it a lot more. Why am I about to regret it a lot more? Or you might, I don't know. Actually, you might enjoy this part. So, what do you want to do, Nevis, as all these forces are getting ready to basically dogpile you and overwhelm you, try to overwhelm you with sheer force of numbers? I'm sorry. None of them have names. They can't touch Battle, me. battle groups count as higher level opponents. This is no organized army right now. They're dealing with emergencies. We probably have squad, you know, 
people randomly forming into makeshift squads, they can't touch me. Are you certain these people are not routed? They are not routed. <laughs> that said, Nevis is going to hold the rear and uh, have everybody retreat. You will Back be able to, to retreat. Okay. And I think the last thing we will do for tonight, because the next section of this will take a bit because of how it can be a little bit tedious and complicated the first time. Uh, so I'll probably say that for next session, just otherwise we're going to get stuck and not get anywhere near done. Um, what did you want to do, Sark? I would. I am very curious. So has it has it been a while and he's and uh, this does this person have a name? Do, do I know this person's name? Uh, yeah, uh, Swiftpaw. Swiftpaw. Is, uh, I'm going to uh, I'm going to wait till he's alone and everyone's sort of, you know, asleep and there's really no. Uh... Mm -hmm. Yep, just the sent sentries they set up around camp. Has has he sort of maybe gone off on his own to you know do a bit of reflection or just sort of away from the camp? Uh, he would have gone to his tent to sleep. So uh, as so, what I'm going to do is um, the sentries near his tent. Mm. I am going to just you know slip in and uh, make them disappear. All stealth. And I'm going to use an excellency. Hey. I don't know what an excellency does, though. But I know I have it. You can either add your skill or one of your attributes again to the roll. <laughs> Whatever, Sire. Cool. One or the other, by the way. So, like, if you have, like, five fortitude and you're rolling with fortitude, you can add an additional five. Yep. Or if you or if you have five and a skill and no fives in any of your attributes, then you could just use that skill instead. And then after I do that, I'm going to uh, just basically go into his tent and uh, I guess start to speak to him. Uh, yeah, he looks to be asleep in his tent as you make all those sentries just go bye bye. Do you wake him up or are you just saying this? No, I'm I'm going to go into his tent. Um I'm going to uh Is there a way I can pull out my knife without uh w without activating its its power? Um, yeah, you could try to communicate with it to try to make sure it uh doesn't activate. Yeah, I'm, so. I basically want to uh Actually, is there any rope around? Uh yeah, this is a this is a uh This is a soldier's tent. Yeah, there would be rope. You know, let's just have the dice decide what's going to happen. 
they chose poorly. I'm going to forego all of that, and I'm just going to uh, simply say, it's been a while. How loudly do you say this? Because he's asleep. Enough to wake him up. Alright. Uh, let's see. Uh... And that's a botch. Hey, look, he doesn't wake up. As he wake up, wakes up, and his body basically freezes up as he sees you. And he just kind of sputters a little bit, mouth opening and closing, but no sound coming out, as he looks just, like, utterly and totally shocked by this turn of events. Almost like he must be having a nightmare. Oh, it's much worse than a nightmare. <laughs> As it is your go to do what you wish right now, as he's just kind of stunned senseless for this. And his name is not Softpaw, but Lightpaw? Swiftpaw. Swiftpaw. I'm gonna look at him and say, <laughs> What's wrong? And say, Wait, <clears throat> What's wrong, Swiftpaw? Look like you've seen a ghost or something. You you, you, you you can't be here. A llama? You are supposed to be dead. Be double dead! Funny thing about that. I'm, I'm going to look him and say... You know, the funny thing about ghosts is they always tend to come back and haunt to haunt you. I'm going to take a cigarette that I stole, or not a cigarette, but a, some sort of cigar that I stole and uh, essentially light it in his tent and take a hit from it. And then I'm going to look him and say, you know, Probably thought a, probably thought you were all clever, taking me out like that. Quite frankly, I thought it was done for. This, is, this, this can't be happening. You, you can't be here. It was at this moment that Sark could see the terror in Swiftpaw's eyes. A small puddle of wetness radiating out from his crotch as he cowered there in the tent, the darkness seeming to close in around him as Sark just quietly, slowly drew in on his cigar. <clears throat> You're looking a little moist there. Oh, God. <laughs> Why? I'm, I'm also looking it's and say... It's so nice that you got him all moist. Oh, God. <laughs> Poor Kerr. <laughs> I'm Stark's going to look at him and say hear about that camp that camp of rabbits heard someone snuck in and burned down their food supply mm -hmm. it's a real shame gotta, gotta wonder who would do something like that someone someone who, had, who would have the audacity to not just kill their opponent but make them suffer Really put the fear in their eyes. What do you want? I'm going to look at him slowly and say, I 
thank you now. It wasn't anything personal. It was just business. Of course it is. It's always just business. And I'm going to uh, draw my... I'm basically going to draw my blade and, and put it at his throat. Please... Please don't hurt me. I'm going to look at him and say, you and I are going to say, you and I are going to take a little walk. He'll nod his head slowly. So did I, uh, okay, above game, did I have any type of like other relationship with this person? Like, were we like, did, did we... Before the whole like thing, were we kind of like, I guess, like quote unquote, pack mates before this? That's up to you. Yeah, I was gonna say, isn't it your backstory? Mm -hmm. I I did not write. Okay, I didn't write this part. Okay, so then for all intents and purposes, yes, we were, we were actually good friends. Okay. So I'm going to take him out of the, uh, out of the tent, and uh, we're we're gonna go. You know, walk into uh, to an area where there's sort of water, you know, away from the camp. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to uh, make sure to grab another two cigars. Okay. We're we're gonna we're gonna get to a clearing uh, while I have the uh, basically the knife at his throat, ready to uh, end him. Once we get to a small clearing, I'm going to say, I'm going to look at him and say, all right, it's far enough. And I'm going to essentially uh, throw him on the ground. Mm hmm Yeah, he just kind of falls over like a uh, sack of wet potatoes. He seems absolutely terrified. At this point, I'm also going to sit down next to him and uh, sheath my dagger, uh, do another pull on the cigar, and uh, say... And I'm going to look at him and say, there's only one question I have for you. I'm not, I'm not going to ask who you did it for, although it's been on the conversation and a lot of different things could happen. I want to ask who, I want to ask you who was involved, who knew. This old Shadow Hearts idea. He was the leader. He said he was going to kill us if we didn't go along with it. Also, one of the other members of your little group before it went south. He was always the most ambitious one. And it was his plan. He threatened to kill anyone who didn't agree with him right then and there. Why? Because he wanted to get in with uh, getting good with a new backer, and it looked like the backer had, well, less than ideal things he wanted us to do. Things that you probably wouldn't have approved of. So Shadowheart decided you needed to go. Who was this backer? Mahasuchi. We found out when we joined the army, or we were forced to join. It was either that or bad things. So you gave up everything you believed, everything 
all your friendships, everything, and betrayed me because someone threatened your life. After these literal countless times, every one of us almost died. He still have family, and they. he said he would go after them, and he would torture them. I couldn't do that. I'm sorry. Even now, it's still something he brings up. That if I don't do my job right, then he can't guarantee their safety. I'll look at him and say, well, it looks like we're at an impasse. I'm gonna look at him and say, I'm gonna look at him and say, there's another one in the camp. The uh, the other the other barbarian camp. There's another one who apparently had something to do with it. Mm-hmm. Bright thing. He he didn't know. I swear he didn't know shadow shadow heart got to him and lied to him that you betrayed the group and were stealing stuff from us and you know he's not necessarily the smartest he bought it to a client sinker so he joined up what about you I want just wanted to protect my family. That's it. That's why I, that's why I joined. That's why I worked with you. And that's why I didn't have as much choice. I can't fight him. I know I'm not strong enough. And if I do, then he's going to do horrible things to my family. And here's where I expect Sark to say, and I will protect your family. I'm going to look at him and say, and say, well, technically as an assassin, your only job was to kill me, which you did technically, which means the contract would have been completed. While I am inclined to take revenge, and I probably should, I'm going to give you an option. You either help me or you start running. If you can promise to protect my family, I'll do whatever you say. You know as well as I do that I can't make any guarantees. That being said, I know someone who who might be able to. You help me do you help me get what I want, and I'll help you get what you want. And he will hesitate before nod and reach out a hand towards you. I will extend my hand to him. I'll grab his hand and basically yank him very close in the back of his ear and then say, try any shit. And Mahasuchi isn't going to be the one you're going to have to worry about. 
<laughs> and then swift paw, swift paw felt the cold embrace of death as Sark's dagger plunged between his ribs. And, and I will, last and I will caveat life. with, and I will also caveat with that, with that say, you know what I'm capable of and what I'm willing to do. Just make make sure like that 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 the the you know what I'm capable of and what I will do. I I want to emphasize that part. And with and then with that, I will uh, take him back to I will uh, take him back to uh, the essentially our city. If that's okay. Yes. I think this is a good ending spot for today. And thus, with all the traitors to Mahasuchi, we start hearing the ringling of bells again. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh, I just realized who you're talking about, Toshime. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. <laughs> Mmm, oh, uh, I didn't even consider that, but yeah, that's, oh, fuck, yeah, that, that, that could call him. Okay, I will have to factor that into my notes. There, okay, so for those of you who don't know, there is a third circle demon um, who is basically in charge of making sure a certain never or Yozai never wakes up. Because if the Yozai ever wakes up, uh, basically all of free will gets ripped away and erased. So his job is to make sure that this Yozai stays asleep. The way the reason the way he does this, though, is by hunting down people who betray or are traitors or create traitors because traitors and betrayers are one of the things that start waking this guy up. So the fact that I didn't kill this person that betrayed me just and ended up waking up the bad people? No, he hasn't woken up. Uh, trust me, it would be very, very bad if he woke up. Um, I'm trying to find his name. Uh, no, also, aren't we meant to, like, kill God? Yeah. You're, you're not ready for that, though. Not quite yet. Almost. We're working on it. Ah, so this is super god. This is like a super god. Got it. Uh, Satravel. That was the name of the uh, the Yozai. Mm -hmm. I just had to find his name again. I'm trying to find his soul. All right, so shall we end? Yes. Great. Now on to Exalted Session 2 for tonight. <laughs> Another four that, that, hours, that. baby. Mm, nope, I ain't making that far. Okay, okay.
I will accept six hours. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure that's how, that's how that works, but okay. <laughs> uh, none of you leave yet, please. After okay. we're finished. Okay. All right, everybody. Thank you for joining us for Evan Sales Exalted. Check out our website, zgfgaming.com. We've got links for our Discord, Telegram, Twitter, Patreon, and more. There on the website as well as down in the description below through our link tree. Thank you to my patrons, donators, and subscribers. It is because of your support that I'm able to continue bring, bringing these streams to you all. I really cannot do this without your guys' help and support, so thank you. Consider becoming a patron over at patreon.com slash zgfgaming. It is one of the best ways to support the channel, though you can also do so by grabbing some packs over at uh, Stream Loots, or by simply sharing the stream around. Again, everyone, thank you so very much for joining, though, and I bid you the most fundest adieu. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Ralph.